Hey there everybody, before we get started with this anticipated video, I just want to quickly say I'm very sorry for the Power Director watermark that you see in this video right here. The reason you're going to see that is because obviously that's where I clearly edited this video. I got a new laptop about a couple of months back and obviously this laptop came with this software, but the software I like to use is Wondershare Femora. I was having a very, very difficult time installing it and obviously I was worried about getting this anticipated video out um, because of it not installing so I just went ahead and edited from PowerDirector but clearly because you see the watermark I just used it from the free version um, just to kind of help me until once I figured out Wondershare Femora and I was able to install Wondershare Femora but after you know I edited from PowerDirector and obviously I just don't really have the time to edit the entire video all over again but on Wondershare Femora so I hope this is just a one video you could deal with this power director watermark I hope it doesn't distract you too much um, I know it won't be a big deal to some but I know for others it will be so for those that do get really bothered by that I do just want to quickly apologize now that I got that out of the way I hope you all enjoy this video that um, I had a lot of fun doing with my guests I got one question for <coughs> all of you. Thank you. That's not a question, but thank you. Yes. What's your favorite <laughs> scary movie? Your mom. I like that. That's a good answer. That's a great movie. <laughs> My sister, when she doesn't get her hair done. <laughs> well, hello there, everybody. I hope you all are having a wonderful 2022 so far. I am 22 Tiger Dude, wearing indeed this, this ghost face mask. And of course, I am here with all of my lovely guests right here. And yeah, it's just that time of the season and of the new We are going to be doing this, so I'm very much looking forward to doing this a lot. I always like doing this with my friends right here. So, of course, before we all get started, I'm going to go to everyone one by one. Coming on this segment for the first time, and just in general, my channel is none other than Jordan Farrell. Hello, I'm Jordan Farrell. Um, I run an animation channel uh, titled Jordan Farrell FTV Animation. I'm a good friend of these guys. And uh, I'm. Well, I don't know here. about that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Down. I'm glad to be here. Uh, I was an observer of these videos uh, whenever I didn't, I felt like watching hour long videos. <laughs> and now it's cool to be a part of this and uh, actually show my face here. Next one up here is Henry Ewing. Why is it black? <laughs> 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 wait, wait, what did Henry say? I completely missed that. Why is it black? <laughs> okay, it was literally just a black screen. I don't, I don't know what that's about, but anyways, hi, hi, hi. I'm excited to be here again, like to talk about my anticipated movies. Like it's usually like quiet season, but I think 2002 is going to be a great year for movies, you know. 2002, yeah, 2042. Yeah, Spider-Man. Yeah, definitely. Can't yeah. Wait. <laughs> Dude, I can't wait to see Harry Potter in the Chamber of Secrets. Yeah. I can't wait for 3005, man. I can't <laughs> wait for Lilo and Stitch. Let's go. Treasure <laughs> Planet. That's going to be great. Totally Lord not a box office bomb. Oh, yeah. Matrix Reload. Actually, it came out in the last no, year that after. It came out in 03, you dummy. Fuck you. Hey, be nice. No, I fly off negativity. <laughs> Next one up here we have is Film Fan 0599. Oh, what a bitch. <laughs> uh, where is he? Um, oh, okay. Of course, you guys would pick. Of course, you guys would pick the time when I go to blow my nose to fucking pick me as the next person up. Anyways, um, yes. Um, Where's the use tissue? Um, yes, it is Film Fan 0599 here again. We're back at it with another most anticipated list. 
Um, and uh, yeah, there's some pretty exciting movies to get excited about this season. Um, I, this is the first video, um, uh, first anticipated video I'm doing on my new laptop, new webcam, baby. Woohoo! Uh, much more slick and clean than Ooh, you know. Yeah. Um, Eat. Hell yeah. Um, and I, I actually, yeah. Speaking of that, I am also filming this from my new laptop. So I guess new laptop boys rejoice, film fans. <laughs> And now, of course, the next one here, also here on these segments for the first time, and I think just on my channel in general, is Timothy Anderson. Anderson. Hello, Mr. everybody. Anderson. Woo. Uh, yeah. So, going back to the talk about 2002, man, I can't wait for this year. we got a lot of great movies. we got the remake of The Rain coming out. we got Star Wars Episode 2. we got Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, the second chapter in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. we got a lot going on this year. I'm just kidding, guys. It's 2022 already, and I can't wait to talk about these movies with these guys. Yeah, it's going to be great, and I can't wait to talk about these and have fun with y'all. Hopefully you're not dazed and confused. <sighs> For me personally, it's a really dry season for me, so there's not really a whole lot I'm personally looking forward to. But for my honorable mentions, I have here, for different <coughs> reasons, Moonfall. I have Ambulance, Let's Go Michael Bay, and Operation <laughs> Fortune, the new Guy Ritchie movie. Those are my honorable mentions. Damn. My honorable mentions for spring 2022 are Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Morbius, if it gets pushed back again, The Bad Guys, <laughs> Turning Red, and a movie that none of I don't, none of us have heard of, uh, The Unbreakable Boy, a movie about an autistic child. Hopefully, it's better than music. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> you have to remind it every. Why is it every time I go live on here, somebody has to remind me of that stupid fucking movie? I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to be reminded about that. That was painful to watch. I haven't seen the movie, and I feel your pain. All Thank right. You. My honorable mentions are Clock Stoppers, Big Fat Liar, <laughs> E.T. 20th Anniversary. <laughs> oh, wait. It's 2022, not 2002. Sorry about that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> In all seriousness, like... I'm going to go, like, in order of release, because, like, I don't really have any order with these. So, like, the first few of these are already out, but we got the 355, Bell, oh, God. Scream, mm -hmm. Charlie XCX, Alone Together, The Worst Person in the World, X, Ambulance, Disappointment Boulevard, and if it comes out, Deep Water. Hi. Um, and now, um, okay, so these first two are already out, but I'm going to include them anyways. Um, so we have Belle, Scream, um, The King's Daughter, which looks like the best comedy of 2022. Um, we have The uh, the Worst Person in the World. We have Studio 666, um, Morbius, uh, Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and uh, the, oh shit, that's it. Um, I thought I had more, but that's it. Wow. You could tell us now, we're prepared for this. Well, I mean, this was in my top five. But I literally went to go see it last night, and that was Scream, um, which was honestly probably the best Scream since Scream. Um, it's, it's great, and I'm actually planning on seeing it a second time. I don't usually do that with horror movies. The last horror movie I think I saw twice was Spiral, which came out last year. Shit. Uh, it, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that prepared. was <laughs> yeah, very prepared, huh? <laughs> okay, everyone. Now that we got our honorable mentions out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and get into our number five. What the fuck? <laughs> 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 All Okay, so my number five is something that's going to last forever. Jackass forever. Hey. 
I am really looking forward to this one a lot. Uh, I really enjoy the three Jackass movies that we've got in. I think all of them are really funny. They're really outrageous. They're, they could definitely be a little too gross at points. There's points where I'm not one to like literally cover my eyes during the movies, but there's literally points where I have to cover my eyes watching those movies because of how gross they can get at times. But aside from that, really, yeah, they're outrageous. They're really funny. The stunts these guys are willing to do is just... I don't know how they do it, but the fact that they do it for our own entertainment value is something that I have to really respect. And I never imagined we'd get a fourth one uh, in a million years, but here we are. I know it was supposed to come out last year, um, yeah, in the fall, but it got pushed to this season. And considering this is a dry season for me, hopefully this could definitely be one of the highlights. You know, I think it's great that you know, Giant Knoxville, and most of the crew are back for this one. And I'm looking forward to Brian. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to seeing what stunts that they have going for this fourth and uh, final one. I'm really looking forward to it. The trailers have made me laugh, honestly. Consider me down. So hopefully this one could be one of the highlights. And that is why Jackass Forever is my number five. I hope so, you jackass. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> well, since uh, we're mixing up our list, I might as well just randomly pick my number five, and that is uh, The Black Phone. Um, it's a new horror movie from Scott. That comes out in June. Fuck. Sorry. <laughs> it got delayed. Yeah, it got delayed. <laughs> Fuck you, 2020. 2022, fuck. My man's having not having fuck a good 2022. day. Fuck 2022. My man's not having a good day, Jesus. I'm sorry, First bro. First day on the job. <laughs> his first movie, his first movie comes out in June. Well, and yeah, I do think it, it does look great, though. All right, it's the debut feature film from Skydance Animation, Luck. Now, I know... I'm just kidding. No, it did not. (laughs) Luck is a debut feature for a new animation studio, Skydance Animation. Um, Most of the people who are in that studio are from Pixar and Disney and quit their jobs to form this new studio. And uh, Jamie Fonda plays a dragon and Whoopi Goldberg plays the main character. And uh, I've seen the short film they've done in the last year, Blush, and I was so impressed with the level of quality in the writing and story that I'm confident to see if they can pull off in their first feature. And if the movie winds up being something else, feel free to clown on me. My number five is Turning Red, which was supposed to be Pixar's return to theaters after two years, but as of they recently... Got fucked. Yeah. Yeah, basically you got fucked. That but as for this one, like I don't know if it's gonna be like top tier Pixar, but it does look like there's something enjoyable there and it's a directorial the feature directorial debut from the Domi Shi, the director of the short bow, which I've heard is really good and also got Billie Eilish and her brother Phineas, who is also in the movie writing songs for it, which is cool. And yeah, it's always cool to have a, another original film from Pixar. And fingers crossed, Lightyear comes to theaters. Watch it be the only one in theaters because it's an IP. Yeah. Hello, um, my number. <laughs> Hello, uh, hello, uh, <laughs> I'm so unprepared. Hello, uh, my number five is, um, is, uh, the unbearable weight of massive talent. Um, this is the, uh, the new, uh, Nicolas Cage movie where he is playing himself. And this, um, I can't lie, this looks absolutely hysterical. Um, like, just that trailer was one of the funniest things I saw last year. Like, I'm very excited about this movie. It generally looks hilarious. Uh, Pedro Pascal, of all people, plays his biggest fan in this, and that gets me really excited, too. It just looks like a fun movie. 
you know, it, it, it's what the uh, the what everything has um you know marketed as. It looks like the most Nicolas Cage movie possible, and it just looks like a lot of fun. I'm I'm excited for it. Um, you know, it it, it, it should be a good time, honestly. So. Uh, yeah, number five, uh, unbearable wave, massive talent, uh, Nicholas Cage, baby. You know the cage, the cage. You know. All right, so my, I know. <laughs> so my number five is the new Bond movie, Die Another Day. Um, looks really good. Definitely not going <laughs> to suck. Uh, definitely not going to ruin the James Bond franchise for a little bit. Okay, so in all seriousness, though, my number five is actually a sequel to a movie that came out in 2002, and that was Jackass Forever. I cannot wait to see this movie. Um, it looks absolutely hilarious. Uh, they showed the new trailer before Scream last night, and I was laughing the entire time. Um, I love all three of the movies, and I love Bad Grandpa. It was the only movie I've ever snuck into seeing in a theater. And somehow got away with it. Um, well, now you have have it because you just admitted it. So you know, it came, it came bitch. out. It came out ten, almost ten years ago. Shut the fuck up. Doesn't matter. You're canceled. <laughs> Whatever. All right. Well, it's not my fault. You decided to pick a number five that got delayed. <laughs> well played. Real. <laughs> well played okay I'm really excited to see these cast members returning it's going to be great um, the stunts look funny the, I can't wait to see the bad grandpa back Erwin uh, this is, it's going to be awesome and I plan on watching the other four because Paramount Plus gratefully has them all so other three the other three and bad grandpa Why? because why not um, yeah, yeah, so you're technically correct. Uh, the, the, you know, all four, the, the, you know, technically four Jackass movies. Yeah. Even, so, even if it's a spinoff, you know, still counts. I, I, I'm really excited to see it. Um, and I will be there opening night to last my ass off for an hour and 36 minutes. And now let's get into our number four. Oh, man, hold on, guys. My back is hurting right now. It's oh, hurting damn. so much from UK? the unbearable weight of massive talent. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> <laughs> shit! Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> I almost fell off my chair. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry. I, I had to do that. I just had to do that. But, God, yeah, that was I'm worse really... than the amazing Spider Man 2. Oh, you shut. <laughs> but I'm really looking forward to this movie, though. I agree with what film fans said. The fact that Pedro Pascal plays Nicolas Cage's biggest fan, I think it's super hilarious right there. Nicolas Cage looks like he's going to have a lot of fun just playing himself. And like the marketing has been saying, it looks like the most Nicolas Cage movie that we're ever going to get. And that alone makes me really, really excited to watch this one. So... Uh, yeah, there's just not really a whole lot to say other than I'm really looking forward to it. I'm expecting just a ton of fun, just outlandish um, stuff going on. And that's why that is my number four, The Unbearable Way of Massive Talent. Well, funny enough, my number four just so happens to be The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I mean, yeah, to bounce off of you guys, you know, it's it's Nick Cage playing Nick Cage in a movie about Nick Cage. That is the most Nick Cage thing you could fucking do. Hell and Pedro yeah. Pascal's his sidekick. <laughs> I know. I want Pedro Pascal as my sidekick. Don't we all? Yeah, you know, because... Um, well, that's too bad because he has a baby Yoda. Yeah. But it's even better. Yeah. <laughs> my number four is everything everywhere all at once this is the new that's what it's like to go to the bathroom yeah <laughs> after eating taco bell yeah. jesus and, christ jordan <laughs> and this is the new film from daniels who also did swiss army man which 
I didn't love that movie personally, but I did think the concept was really cool. But when I saw this trailer, I was like really blown away by it. And they got this cool concept with Michelle Yeoh as this regular woman who has like power through like the multiverse and she has Wait, to save so the world. Movie? Yeah. Oh, crap. And, no, he's talking like, about The Flash. Oh, wait. Yeah. And also, like, <clears throat> Kefwi Kwan is in it, and Jamie Lee Curtis, and the Russo brothers are producing, which is really cool. So good for Daniels and A24. Damn, Daniel. Back at it again with those white fans. Fucking hell, you guys. All right, anywho. <laughs> Uh, num- my number four. My number four is uh, Jackass Forever. Um, I'm a big, big, big Jackass fan. I love, um, you know, um, that you know, early in my teen years, I was really, really into like the first three movies and stuff like that. I was just, I was just a, like a massive fan. They were just some of the most outlandish and hilarious things I had ever seen in my life. Um, uh, actually, uh, Tony and I rewatched them. Actually, quite a uh, few years ago, and um, I was getting uh, all the Those memories. Were fun times. That was a fun time. We we rewatched all three of them because I just wanted to rewatch all of them on a whim. And now we've got this new one that's coming out, and it looks pretty funny. Um, looks very very hysterical. Um, it seems like the boys are going to be just as outlandish as they were back in the day, and it's just it just looks like a great time. I really hope um, you know it's as funny as the trailers are making it out to be. To be honest, I just want to have a good time with this movie. In all honesty, it, it looks like a ton of fun. It really does. Um, I'm very excited. Um, hope it's a good time. Hope it's just as good as the other three, and uh, we end this uh, franchise on a solid note. All right, so my number four is the unbearable weight of massive talent. I can't tell you how excited I am to see this movie. Uh, I love Pedro Pascal. He's one of my favorite actors. Nicolas Cage has also been one of my favorite actors. Easily his best performance is in the 2005 masterpiece, The Wicker Man, uh, starring Nicolas Cage. Um, I love that movie to death. It is a masterpiece, and I wish it won the Oscar. Said nobody ever, except maybe Old Man. Yes. Uh, Get I, the fuck out of this stream, Old Man. I can't. I'll be. I. I. I just. I can't wait to see it. So, the number four. All right, <laughs> y'all. Now we're gonna get into our number three. Three glasses. You could say my number three is really bad because these guys are super bad. The bad guys. Animation this year so far, my opinion at least, does not look good, like at all, which sucks because I really do enjoy this genre like a lot. And the bad guys really is the first animated release of this year. I'm actually looking forward to. DreamWorks hasn't had like the greatest streak lately, so this is one that I'm really, really rooting for to be good. Um, Because I did like Boss Baby 2 recently, but before Boss Baby 2, um, the last movie I enjoyed from DreamWorks was Captain Underpants, and that was way back in 2017. Um, And I hope the bad guys could be their next really fun really good movie. Uh, I think Sam Rockwell is like perfect for the lead role and the rest of the voice cast looks like they're going to have a ton of fun with that. And the animation too, um, it looks really different for DreamWorks. It kind of looks like DreamWorks is going to get experimental with their animation. Kind of like what Pixar has been doing recently too, where they've kind of been experimenting with their animation, which I really appreciate a lot. And the bad guys definitely looks like it's going to be one of DreamWorks is most impressive as far as like animation style goes it looks like it could just be something that's really funny really fun something super energetic something that could just bring a big smile to my face and i definitely hope that's what the bad guys delivers on um so that's personally my number three so yeah the bad guys well my number three i guess you could say is 
the number three. It's the third in the series of films by the Robert Eggers. It's called The Northmen. Brought to you by the Robert Eggers, who made The Witch and The Lighthouse. <laughs> Lots Not of those. Else. Yeah, the, the third in the trilogy. That's what it is. It's that the, has literally nothing to do with anything. Literally, it's, it's like <laughs> three completely different movies. That That's what makes it great. It's the the trilogy. Yeah, you know. <laughs> when someone says the, it counts. Exactly. It's, yeah, it's like the Cornado trilogy. There's a fucking ice cream. You know, so therefore it counts. But no, in all seriousness, it, it looks so by... <laughs> I love the scale. I like the cinematography. You know, it's the trailer probably misrepresenting the movie for what it is. Definitely because that's how it is with all these movies. <laughs> but no, I like the cast: Alex Xander Skarsgård, Nicole Kidman, Ethan Hawke. I'm down. You know, I'm down for some Viking action. If there's going to be action in it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my number three is the French Dispatch. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that movie is out. Still need to but, see it. Yeah. I need to French your dispatch. But anyway, Ooh. is my number three huh. is the unbearable weight of massive talent, and this is a movie I had been hearing about since like 2019, and Nicolas Cage is just the goat so hearing about this idea i could not be more hyped like he's playing a fictional version of himself and he's hired to attend this rich fan's birthday party and that fan is none other than pedro freaking pascal just wow this sounds like some million dollar nick cage fan fiction and i'm here for it and We've also got Tiffany Haddish, Ike Barinholtz, and Neil Patrick Harris, and yeah, it just seems like a blast. Yeah. Uh, now, um, <laughs> now, yeah. at my number three is uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. Uh, this looks um, pretty crazy. I can't lie. Um, this this is one hell of a concept to uh to do and whatever, and it just it just looks insane. Um, I was um you know I was a big fan of uh the Daniels first movie, which was um Swiss Army Man. I'm a huge I'm a huge fan of that movie. I think that movie's fantastic, and this movie looks somehow even more bizarre. I can't explain it, but it just it does. Um, I just I just love the concept of like just this regular everyday woman. Who has the ability to access the multiverse and the many, many possibilities that we can see with this is just great. I, I think this movie looks really unique and really interesting. Um, I think they're gonna use this concept to its full fullest ability. In all honesty, it, it looks like an absolutely um, in, like just um, engaging movie. Honestly, I'm really excited for how this will turn out. I think this could um, be a really, really fantastic movie, in my opinion. It's got a lot of, of like, a shit ton of potential. So, yeah, um, I think this movie looks incredible. And, uh, yeah, I hope it uh, exceeds on all cylinders for me. So, yeah, that's my number three. Everything, everywhere, all at once, baby. Okay, so my number three, it looks really stupid. At the time of recording this video, I'm going to be watching it in the IMAX theater in the middle of the ocean. It's Moonfall, um, directed by Roland Emmerich of Independence Day fame, and probably that's the only thing that anybody wants to remember him for. Either that or... <laughs> Good. Either that, or the day... <laughs> Either that or the day after tomorrow. Um, well, well, I'm leaving. I... I look, I don't hate Roland Emmerich like most people do, but when I saw the trailer for this movie, I was like, what the hell is this? I was like, last time I saw the moon, like, you know, turn into something that's going to destroy the Earth, it was Transformers Dark the Moon. And that's technically not even about the moon destroying the Earth. That's about the Decepticons using the moon to destroy the Earth. So this movie looks really stupid, but it looks really fun at the same time. And it looks like something that's made to be seen in IMAX. So therefore, I'm seeing it in IMAX. And um, 
the cast is really good. Uh, Patrick Wilson, Halle Berry, um, really good actor. It's just not, I just want to have fun, fun while watching a movie. And this is that type of movie where you go into it and turn off your brain while watching it. It's like 2012, which is a really stupid movie by every, every fabric of the imagination, but it's kind of fun to watch. Um, just because of the fact that we're now in 2022 and everybody thought the world was going to end in 2012. Um, yeah, Moonfall, number three. IMAX opening night. Now, of course, we're all going to get into our number two. So... My number two is a movie that came out of nowhere. It's not a movie I would have put on this list had I not seen the trailer for it. It's probably a movie not really a lot of talking about. Uh, but my number two is going to be a movie called The Outfit. This one has Mark Rylance, Zoe Dutch, Dylan O'Brien. It's supposed to be this crime drama movie. And the tra trailer genuinely had me very, very intrigued. And I just really love the overall production design and the cinematography. It looks like it could be one of the most intense movies of this season. The, I'm not going to lie, the trailer definitely had me sweating because I was like, oh my gosh, it looks like things are going to get really intense here. Um, not really a whole lot to say because I think the trailer has done a good job of not really showing a whole lot. But just on the trailer and the cast alone, because I am definitely a big fan of Mark Ryland, Zoe Dutch, and Dylan O'Brien the overall intrigue behind the whole thing. That's why the outfit is my number two. All right. Uh, feel free to uh, judge me in the parking lot after this. Uh, my number two is the Batman. Wow. I'm judging you. I'm judging. I'm ju you see Sorry. this? You see this ghost face? Ghost face is judging you. Judge alert. Judging. Judging. Judge Steve Harvey no, is judging you. <laughs> Judge oh, Steve no. Harvey. I mean, I mean, he, Steve Harvey is a freaking judge. Yes, that is indeed true. Actually, actually, you got Simon Cowell. Cowell, you got Simon from American Idol on your ass now. So I hope you're happy. <laughs> I've been one of the defenders uh, when Robert Pattinson was casted as Batman. Everyone's like, "Oh no, a sparkly vampire ba Batman!" I'm like, "Shut the fuck up. This guy is an A tier actor, you know." And if you haven't watched Good Times with Robert Patterson, you will see what kind of Batman he'll be pulling off. Um, or Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Oh, yeah, that too. And there's Matt Reeves, Paul, Paul Dano as the Riddler. And the fact that it looks like a genuine de hard edge detective thriller in the vein of Seven, it just looks, it just looks dope. I'm liking it. I'm getting the action figures. I'm ready for for some twists and turns, and I'm fine with it being PG-13, because remember, the best crime thriller, The Dark Knight, is also PG-13. My number two is The Northman, and yeah, Robert Eggers has also directed The Witch and The Lighthouse, which are two of my favorite horror movies of the 2010s, and from the trailer, this seems like it's continuing a streak of some wild, good, scary shit. And concept is based on some old Viking revenge tale. And we got a stacked cast, which has Anya Taylor-Joy and Willem Dafoe returning from his last two movies. But we've also got Alexander Skarsgård and Nicole Kidman, Ethan Hawke, and Bjork. <clears throat> Man got Bjork in this and her My daughter man as well. Got fucking Bjork to be in this. Yeah, and it's gonna be a wild ride, and yeah, I can't wait. Hope you go north, man. Yeah. Hey Henry, it's uh, funny you brought off the, uh, brought off the, uh, brought up uh, brought up. Uh, I can't speak. Um, the north man. <laughs> Um, 
<laughs> I hate my life. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> so, uh, funny you brought the uh, the North Man because that is also my number two. Um, you know, um, yeah, this um, uh, honestly, this was very close to uh, being my number one. I was actually struggling between number two and number one, uh, going back and forth because um, uh, this movie just looks absolutely incredible. I loved the trailer when I saw it when it was first released. But when I saw it before The Matrix Resurrections, holy cow, like, this just looks oh, incredible on, like, just, just, uh, it just has a scope. Because, like, I was, I remember I was talking to Violet about this, and we were um, confused as to why, um, why the movie was going to Universal and why it had such a big budget, because we thought this was going to be another horror movie from uh, Robert Eggers, but then I saw the trailer and then everything made sense. Um, this this looks crazy. This looks like um, a crazy revenge movie set with like Viking settings and shit like that. It, it looks crazy. I'm absolutely excited for this movie. It looks, honestly, it could look like uh, Robert, Egger, Robert Eggers' uh, best movie to date, in all honesty. Like, just the scope of this looks insane. I am ecstatic for this. This movie has a stacked cast. Uh, you know, we got Alexander Skarsgård. I love him. You know, Nicole Kidman's great. Ethan Hawke. Anya Taylor-Joy, Willem Dafoe, and then, of course, Bjork. Look, I'm just saying this right now. If you thought I went crazy during Spider-Man No Way Home, just wait till Bjork shows up in uh, The North Man. I'm about to lose my shit. Um, I, I think it just it just has such so much potential, honestly, um, to be uh, one of the most epic movies of the whole year, in all honesty. It looks fantastic. I'm so excited for this film. And uh, it's very close to being my number one, honestly. Like, it's, it's like, really, really close. But, yeah, but it just comes in. It comes in as the runner-up, man, at number two, The North Man, baby. All right. It's funny that you brought up The North Man because I have to get dressed for this one that's coming up at number two. <sighs> Insert Pornhub music. <laughs> Coming in at my number two is Fantastic Beast: The Secrets of Dumbledore. For obvious reasons. I mean, come on, look at me. Yeah, yeah. Me? yeah I mean, come on. You, you serious? Yeah. Despite my thoughts on the second Fantastic Beast movie. And the fact that this one doesn't look as great as I want it to be, I'm still going to go see it, obviously, because it's Harry Potter related. Also, Niffler. I, I, I just, I can't wait to see it. Um, or I, I can wait, but I can't wait. Uh, it comes out the week before my birthday, and this is going to be a pretty fun birthday present. Uh, it's weird that a Harry Potter re related movie is coming out in April instead of July or November. Um. It's, it's actually really weird because usually those are the two release dates, months for it. But, you know, hey, uh, yeah, despite not having Johnny Depp in it, uh, and Mads Michelson looks like he's going to kill it as Grindelwald. Jude Law looks good as Dumbledore. We don't talk about Ezra Miller. Yeah, I never thought he was that good in the first two anyway. So, But, yeah, this is – it looks fun. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see Hogwarts again finally full-fledged hopefully but this time for real it's actually in the whole movie um hopefully there's more action in it um hopefully they fledge out the characters more and make it actually feel like there needs to be five um of these movies and not three like the original plan was i mean i have a harry potter tattoo i have all the books all the movies a bunch of funko pops niffler the cloak i mean of course i was still gonna go see it Rock on, dude. It looks like we are all going to get into our number one. So here we go. So my number one one most intimate movie of the season. It's probably very unsurprisingly to say it, The Batman. You know, I know it's not a very unpredictable number one, but I'm 
really excited for the Batman, though, obviously, and I am really looking forward to seeing Robert Pattinson portray this character. I think he'll definitely be a really great Batman, and obviously Matt Reeves is a very talented director from stuff like Cloverfield to the Planet of the Apes trilogy to Let Me In. Like The dude really has a, just such a big talent behind the camera, and especially with the dark tone that we saw him brought to the Planet of the Apes movies, I'm looking forward to seeing that dark tone and and the Batman, and for what I see, him really elevating that dark tone. The cinematography in that looks incredible. Stylistically, it looks different from the other Batman movies, which I appreciate because when you make a new Batman movie, you want to stand out. You don't want it to be like the Christopher Nolan trilogy. You don't want it to be like the Michael Keaton movies. You want it to be its own thing, and I definitely think that's what they're going to really bring to this um, you know, interpretation here. Just, yeah, like I said, just great filmmaking. Cass looks great. Zoe Kravitz looks like she'll do a really great job as Catwoman. Colin Farrell, you know, everyone has said it, looks completely unrecognizable as, um, what's it called? Uh, the Penguin. Uh, no, Penguin. Yeah, I'm right. Penguin, thank you. I was losing my thought there. And obviously Paul Dano here, uh, who's going to play Riddler. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that too, because he's definitely one of the most underrated actors. So it's it's going to be awesome to see him in a big major blockbuster like this. And just the scope of it looks incredible. And everyone is just saying how this looks like a comic book movie brought to life. And I definitely feel that comic book presence in this. It just looks so incredibly well directed. Just love the atmosphere, love the tone and the score also sounds uh, really great as well. So yeah, for all the obvious reasons, you know, I, I, I know this has been a lot of people's number one list, or at least in their top five. I just have to agree with the majority on this one. Hopefully it could be something that I'll at least really enjoy. So for all those reasons alone, that is why The Batman, directed by Matt Reeves, is my number one for this season. Let's go. Well, since I'm going to be the rebel in this group, I guess. <laughs> uh, my number one is a movie that pretty sure most of y'all never heard of. Maybe Henry, but it's a Netflix anime movie called Bubble. Um, the reason why I'm looking forward to it is, is it's a sci-fi fantasy um, big scope adventure movie, and I'm a sucker for those movies. Uh, the animation looks fucking gorgeous, but then again, uh, the studio behind it, Wit Studio, is at the top of their game in this movie. They got some of the most top talent in anime right now, and it, it just looks like fun. It looks like a visual treat for the eye. I'm baffled that it's on Netflix when it should be on the big screen. Uh, and even though Bat the Batman was not number two, num this number one spot is also a Warner Brothers production. So, Yeah, my number five is going to be like a really epic movie. That is, of course, Marry Me with Jennifer Lopez and Matt ah. Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> like, Owen Wilson would be like, "Wow, I'm wow, Jennifer Lopez." Wow. <laughs> but just, yeah, my but yeah, my number one is the Batman, and yeah, Batman has been one of my favorite superheroes since I was a kid, along with Spider Man, and it's been ten years since we got a solo Batman movie with the Dark Knight Rises. In July. Holy and, shit, it's been 10 years since the Dark Knight Rises? Yeah. Fuck. And since then, of course, we've gotten Ben Affleck as Batman in the DCEU. But this is something completely different because we got Matt Reeves giving us a very gritty style that reminds me of Joker a little bit. And, and we got like a Really good cast here with Robert Pattinson as Batman, Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman, Paul Dano as the Riddler, Colin Farrell as the Penguin, who's already announced to get his own spinoff show on HBO Max. Then we got Jeffrey Wright as Commissioner Gordon, John Turturro as Carmine Falcone, and Andy Serkis as Alfred as well. A lot of names. And I'm very excited to see how it goes. Hi. Uh, the Batman. Um, yeah, just... Um, 
Yeah, the Batman. Didn't even uh, say number one. I, I love. I, I love how me and you, film fan, we know that our number ones are so uh, uh, predictable that we just don't give a grandiose introduction. Yeah, 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 just like yeah, the Batman. Like it's it's the fucking Batman. Yeah, like I like. But can you blame me though? This movie looks fucking incredible. Like I just like like everything about this just screams something I would love. Honestly, like um, I honestly think this could possibly be. My favorite Batman to date, like quite possibly, Robert Pattinson looks fantastic as the titled character. I'm excited to see his portrayal of Batman. It's more kind of like, kind of more introverted, kind of more um, trying, to, you know, d more dealing with his demons more than ever. And then, of course, Paul Dano as the Riddler. Um, I'm just as excited for because. It just everything about that, that I've seen from this character just so far just looks absolutely like creepy as hell, and um, I'm excited for that. Um, you know, Colin Farrell as the Penguin looks great. Um, Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman looks great. You know, it just it, this movie has a stat cast overall, and I love Matt Reeves a lot. Matt Reeves is honestly one of my favorite directors. I love Let Me In. I love the Planet of the Apes trilogy. So yeah, I'm really excited about this movie. This movie looks absolutely phenomenal. Um, I really do think this could be one of DC's um, greatest achievements. Honestly, it has a shit ton of potential, and I hope this movie just hits on all cylinders for me. You know, honestly, it it has like like I said, it has a lot, and I mean a lot of potential. <laughs> Timothy, uh, what are you doing your spare time? <laughs> okay, so my number one most anticipated film, of, not just of spring 2021, 2022, but of the year, is none other than The Batman. I mean, this is easy. This immediately jumped up to my list when it got announced. The teaser trailer was absolutely amazing. And these guys know how much I love Matt Reeves. All right, I love the Planet of the Apes movies. He didn't direct the entire trilogy. He directed Dawn and War. Um, oh, yeah, which are, yeah, th thank you. I, I oh, yeah, for, yeah, I, saw, I, for I sometimes off. forget he didn't direct Rise. I, didn't I sometimes Rise. forget. It's uh, Rupert did, Wyatt. Uh, yeah, him. There, there you go, Rupert Wyatt. Thank you, yeah. Okay, yeah, so correction, um, folks. I guess I'll correct myself. The, the Dawn of Planet of the Apes sequels. Thank you, Timothy. Yeah, he did the Planet of the Apes sequels in the reboot trilogy which are two of the best films i've ever seen let me in which is my favorite vampire movie of all time but his best movie and these guys know it and this is a huge unpopular opinion among people that i talk to but his best movie in my opinion is cloverfield i have a poster right behind me yeah. and What's i have up? the movie two times i absolutely love cloverfield it's yeah, one of my yeah, favorite so movies you really, so you really so you really hate it huh yeah, if it's a Cloverfield Paradox we're talking about, but all right, <laughs> the Batman looks like Seven on steroids if it was PG-13. And that's not necessarily a bad it looks like it's going to push its PG-13 to its very limits. Um, kind of like how War for the Planet of the Apes is kind of violent for a PG-13 movie and disturbing, this one looks like it's going to be. This movie looks insane. Cloverfield was very violent and kind of gory for a PG-13 movie, what you could see anyway, because the entire movie, T.J. Miller's behind it, screaming, oh my god, and he, you know, shaking his phone or his camera around like a madman, but um, <clears throat> this movie looks insane. The story, the acting, the cast, the score from Michael Giacchino looks, it sounds incredible. The costume design, this has to be my favorite bat suit I've seen on the big screen ever and the movie hasn't even come out yet so let that be a thing so Kravitz looks like she's going to be the best cat woman we've gotten since Halle Berry um uh <laughs> I was expecting you guys to be like what the fuck <laughs> um everyone's just like I'm not going to say anything <laughs> <laughs> this looks insane I boobies. can't wait to see it yes I agree. boobies I'm thinking that this has the potential to beat the dark knight and that's not an easy task because The Dark Knight is arguably the greatest superhero movie of all time, other than Spider-Man 2. I 
love the Dark Knight. So, yeah. Every time I watch the trailer or see the trailer, I'm just like, yes, it's the Batman. This is going to be the greatest two minutes of my life. And I, I can't imagine. I'm hoping that the movie's original length is still the same. And that's running at a very near three hours. Um, Colin Farrell looks so unrecognizable as the Penguin. Um, it's just, I, I can't wait to see it. And it's going to be awesome. And we did it. That's our we top did it, five Joe. anticipated. Oh, or, yes, <laughs> we did it, Joe. <laughs> yes, and then we did, Joe. And just and then we did. We, we did, did it we fast did. and quick, like her mom. We did it. <laughs> but of course, I'm gonna let everyone do their outros before we close off this video. And of course, since I'm gonna cut to Jordan first to do his outro, um, I did just want to say that Jordan has a short film uh you can talk about a little bit if you want to jordan but i'll leave a link in the description down below to his short film but yeah here we go closing up saying his goodbyes jordan Farrell. well before i go uh i released a new short film called dark gray blue it's a my first original uh film major original film i'm mostly known for fan film stuff or weird pa parody stuff but this is my first drama it's loosely based on a person I knew uh, a few years ago, and uh, it's been doing really good. Uh, give a watch, you know. You never know. You might cry. You might laugh. You know, just uh, don't get yourself hurt. And uh, be sure to check out my channel, uh, Jordan Farrell FTV Animation, and all the socials that I'm pretty sure Tony will drop a link. And uh, on to you, Henry. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Follow me. you, Henry. You look like the guy from the trailer. You, <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter at Henzo Ewing or on Letterboxd at Henry Ewing. Or you can find my YouTube channel, which is just my name. Or you can find me in real life. If you see me out in the street, say hey. I will jump you. <laughs> Take your uh, pants off. <laughs> respect women or die trying. <laughs> A lot of craziness. Look at this sexy man over here. Every time I do, it makes me laugh. Oh, um, now, um, <laughs> look at this photograph. Um, but, um, yeah. Sometimes the jet can tell if you're legit frozen or if you're speechless. Uh, you can find me on the uh, the YouTube's Film Fandle Five Nine Nine, the Twitters Film Fandle Five Nine Nine, the TikToks. Film Fandle 599, the Letterboxes, Film Fandle 599. Um, and if you do uh, see me out in the street, I will run for my life. Um, because Subscribe to his OnlyFans. Because I do not like human contact. Um, yes, if you want, yes. Um, but, instead, but instead of getting nudes, you will get pictures of my vinyl records. Um, now, uh, <laughs> Um, so, uh, you... hell yeah, I will text you pictures of Frankie. Meetings. That's hot. Um, but, um, but yes, um, yes, because, and like I said, if you see me out in public, I will probably run because I do not like human contact. Um, so, um, actually, that's not true. But, um, that, but if it's actually, a woman, that's not true. I'm very lonely. Please, please help me. Um, no, I think, um, but no, get this um, man some booty. Jesus Christ, Anyways, um, Somebody get him a gift card to OnlyFans. Uh, Five dollar discount. In all seriousness, though, so, uh, thanks Tony for having me on as usual of for course. these anticipated videos. Um, it's always a, uh, a great honor to be on these. So, um, thank you again. Had a great time. You can buy your copy of Cloverfield at your nearest Walmart for $10 and 4K, and that's a steal. Thank you, Tony, for having me on this channel. You can find me on Twitter at TAnderson024. Uh, you can find my YouTube channel, Poppin' Movies. I don't really post much on there anymore because I work like 80 hours a week. 
I was lucky enough to have tonight off to join this. And I said, yeah, why not? I'll uh, stop being a depressed piece of shit and actually talk to my friends for once. So I'm really excited to do, um, for this year in film, and I'm really excited to talk to y'all. And no, I do not have an OnlyFans, so don't even ask. So thank you guys, and have a great night. And uh, don't forget to get your copy of Cloverfield, which also turns 14 on the 18th. Did this motherfucker just steal my whole thing? Um... <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker, go fuck yourself. And of course, since Timothy uh, Timothy is here, it's actually a good time to bring up that just recently, me, Film Fan, and Henry uh, appeared on Timothy's channel to talk about our best mediocre and worst movies of 2021. It was a lot of fun guest starring on there. So I'll leave a link in the description down below. Give the video, um, you know, check out the video if you want to. And <laughs> was that a, was that a sneeze? <laughs> It wasn't Avery. It was Jordan's reaction. He was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so, 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 yeah, the video was a lot of fun to do. Um, check it out yeah. if you would like to. And, of course, if you like what you see of Timothy's channel, be sure to leave a subscribe. Link in description down below, as well as to Jordan's short film, Dark Gray Blue. And if you all do see Dark Gray Blue, who be sure to review it on Letterboxd or just rate it. I'll leave his letterbox down as well. And of course, I'll leave the links to all these gentlemen's channels in the description down below. So everyone, this is Point to Tiger Dude here wearing his ghost face mask with Jordan, Henry, Film Fan, and Timothy. And don't forget that all of us will always have Tiger Tiger Oh, come on, y'all. That Power. was good. Okay, y'all. Okay, y'all. That, that was good. Come on. We got to do it one more time. Okay. Three, two, one. Tiger. Tiger. Power. Okay. Y'all have a good afternoon. Good night.